step involves the step number four, which says about uh, the failure criteria. Okay, so the failure criteria, uh, why it's so important? Uh, we, a uh, designer should already know uh, previously that like why the component will be failing. Okay, in a particular kind of loading. If he'll know that, like he can design that uh, particular component in such a way that it, it won't fail soon. Okay, the component might fail, but it will, it will be uh, like it will survive more life cycles. Okay, so those things should be considered by a design engineer. So uh, it is very much necessary, you know, like before finding the uh, final dimensions, uh, a person should know that uh, how the component is going to fail. Okay, when subjected to a particular kind of loading. So the uh, first, uh, like th this thing is very much necessary. Okay, we need to agree on that first. After that, uh, the types of uh, this uh, failure criteria are elastic deformations, general yielding and fracture. Okay, and we're going to discuss each one of them in details. Okay, um, like I've just chosen few, but generally all those things are only there. So this will help you. And like solving on al like almost all the design procedure pro problems okay elastic deformation is what uh well uh when a shaft is uh, like you know uh, subjected to this uh for this ro loading okay in that uh, there is a elastic deformation you all might have known the the curve right it's like this okay like this itself so uh, this is the elastic region where it's a strong uh, straight and hooks law is follow okay if uh, a fatigue load is considered on this in that way the shaft will fail okay so the maximum force uh, it's elevated by the permissible deflection deflection sorry <coughs> you know like the these two are the shafts uh, they are subjected to the axial load also and uh, the radial load is also there uh, because of the uh, gears which are meshing okay and if the deflection in the shaft geometry you can see there is a slight deflection if the deflection exceeds uh, 0 0.001 to 0 0.003 times the span length between the two bearings okay these are the two bearings okay so uh, let's say the span length is uh, let's say 200 if the machine uh, the, if the deflection exceeds uh, by this thing then uh, the shaft is going to fail shaft fails here i've written it already okay now is general yielding so general yielding it happens only in case of ductile material so what yielding is uh like i i guess like you already know um but uh, like the plastic deformation okay uh it it involves only in the case of ductile material the brittle material has no plastic deformation okay they just fails directly okay so there's a very really good uh, this uh, uh this thing is there here so uh, it's just a uh, ductile fracture is like this okay you can see the yielding is there okay but the brittle fracture it's like very you know like uh, uh like, you know hard okay they just they got failed okay uh, it's like that that okay um and uh, i've also clicked an example about gear tooth failure um you can see like tooth breaks due to static and dynamic loading okay and surface pitting also surface pitting what is surface pitting well uh when a uh, gear is subjected to the force uh small pits are made pits you know like a dump are made okay on surface of the gears and from there the cracks initiates and then it propagates and fails the gear finally okay so those things are also there okay i guess like uh it's it's not too much to uh take in but i guess like you guys already have a clue about what the things are and how the things are working okay I'll just rub it off so like you can like take the notes easily uh, okay so i guess the step number four is also very much important uh, because uh, knowing the failure criteria will help in making a part which is much more sustainable now next process in line is uh, shape of a machine element it's very much important and i guess like it's the magical step you know why because most of us have a doubt like why this particular uh, shape is like this why the gears are like this only why not some other shape let's say why not square uh, the teeth gears are there or maybe why not this uh, chain is like this and why only uh, that kind of shape is present so uh, the shape of a machine element is decided on two things first one is operating condition and second one is adjoining machine element okay so first of all like let's take a deep example uh why first the question is why the shape of the gears are like this only why not some other shape 
so it's very easy uh, this uh, kind of shape is known as involute profile and it satisfies the law of gearing what is law of gearing well it says that two rotating bodies uh, are like transferring the motion without any slippage okay it's more detailed but this is just a basic gist of, of the law of gearing okay we're gonna discuss that also in another lectures uh, okay okay so uh, and also like the v-belt why the v-belt is like in the shape of v well uh, it is so because uh, a trapezoidal shape cross section is there because of the wedge action what is wedge action wedge action sees that uh, it, in it increases the force of friction and helps us in transmitting the force much more uh, easily okay but now the question arises why the pulley uh, is shaped like this okay well there is no justification for that uh, it just uh, is in that shape because because the v-belt uh, is of uh, trapezoidal cross section thus the pulley is uh, designed on basis of the adjoining element shape let's say uh, now the sprockets are like this only okay so well uh, they also satisfy the you know like the involved profile uh, but why the chain is like this why it's not uh, in, a, in any other way uh, the basic answer to that is uh, the chain profile is made by the uh, adjoining profile about the sprocket okay so it's that simple okay so all you have to uh, take care about is that uh, whatever you design okay you design a basic element let's say i design this sprocket i'm not going to design this chain okay the chain will automatically uh, be chosen as per the standards and the profile will al always match the sprocket okay I, I will only design the v uh, v belt not the pulley okay the pulley will be uh, designed according to the shape and size of the v belt okay so those things and considerations are always there now let's talk in some mathematical language also now i have to choose uh, geometrical dimensions also in this particular step how am i going to do that uh, the simple question is I just uh, know like uh, I, I should first know what uh, uh, how the uh, this stress is going to consider and uh, how we are going to do that okay so first of all let's say I want to determine uh, on basis of allowable stress uh, let's say there is a tension rod what is a tension rod just a rod subjected to a tension a tensile force okay so there is a simple rod there is a this kind of hook here okay and a hook here and uh, i am stretching it with a force of 5 kilo newton okay uh, i've considered the like uh that the factor of safety is 4.5 the yield strength is 3 360 newton per mm square that's standard you can find that in your books also the force is uh 5 kilo newton i've already like given it okay now we'll use a basic formula of the stress which is force upon area stress is 360 divided by 4.5 why is it so we uh uh, we uh, like we use the yield strength why we are going to use the yield strength because that's the failure criteria in this case like general yielding will happen why general yielding will happen well <laughs> this is a ductile material and general yielding will always happen in ductile material okay so by solving all those things uh we we gonna take uh you know get get the diameter as 8.92 mm but that's not a standard dia right so we're gonna uh, like move on to the nearby standard diameter which is 10 mm okay so that will also be much more safer design more than that uh, we will find the standard and availability of this particular dia uh, will was already uh, in the market okay uh, and so in like determining the geometrical dimensions uh, one must know uh, the failure mode okay so in that in the uh, in the case of tension rod it's general yielding well, in case of uh, transmission shaft, uh, when elastic deformation will happen surely. Okay, we already discussed that in uh, like in the above steps. So uh, in that way, we're gonna use a modulus modulus of elasticity. Okay, we already know what modulus of elasticity is, and if not, we're gonna discuss more on that in the future lecture series. Okay, uh, maybe like you can like comment in the section uh, if you want to uh, video soon. I I I can just make that. Uh, that's not. Uh, you know like it's not a big thing okay uh now uh, let's talk about the deflection method so transmission shaft uh, like it supports the uh you know like the supporting gears okay and uh, so it's very easy uh, like this is just a gear okay and the gear applies a radial load of five kilo newton the diameter i have to find of the shaft uh these are the two bearings at the both ends and the distance between them is 200 okay 
um, and the deflection it's given that the permissible deflection is uh, 0.05 mm only it's already given okay it's like you can find all those details in the standard uh, only we will discuss more on that in future lectures also um, it's just an overview like how you can uh, like proceed with the this uh, di geometrical dimensions part okay so i have this uh, math, uh, formula delta equal to pl cube upon 48 ei right where e is modulus of elasticity and i you already know l is the length between the uh, both the bearing and supporting bearings and p is the force so by subjecting all the values here i will get the diameter as 35.79 but that's not a standard diameter the next standard diameter is 40 mm how do i know this well it's already present in your design of machine elements uh, books or maybe perhaps you can google it also okay so next best diameter is uh, uh, 40 mm so i chose that so the criteria for this is elastic deformation and uh, for the tension one is uh, general yielding elastic deformation i chose the modulus of elasticity and general yielding i chose the yield strength okay so well this uh, suffice the uh, step number five and i guess like you already have a hold about what uh, how you gonna de determine the geometrical tolerances and the dimensions okay so yeah the next step is step number six okay so step number six involves the design modifications okay as the name suggests that uh, whatever uh, like we've designed so far whatever geometrical dimensions we have given it and whatever standards we have chosen and even after that if we require some design modification why is it required the question arises so maybe because of some assembly point of view or maybe perhaps because of some manufacturing point of view okay <clears throat> and if we because of all those things it's not as it's assembly okay yeah so <coughs> assembly point of view manufacturing point of view so maybe because of that uh, if we require some design modifications so we go, we're gonna do that into a particular design okay so as it is written that the geometrical dimensions are modified as per assembly or manufacturing uh, considering uh, and after <coughs> modification revised calculations also done okay at the critical cross section areas as for example uh, let's say uh, in this case uh, the gear <coughs> right <coughs> uh, the gear will be seated with the help of you know like a, a sleeve will be made okay <coughs> And the sleeve will have a cross section area more than the the shaft okay the shaft uh, cross section area uh, the sleeve cross section area will be more than that so uh, if i will be adding this uh, let's say i will be welding it so or maybe like i will be turning the whole shaft initial dia would be like this and maybe the final dia will be like this so i'll have to like you know like recalculate and do the uh, calculations again though the uh, in this case the dia the critical dia remains the same which is the phi but <coughs> then to uh, i have to do the calculations again and that way uh, <coughs> i will come to know that okay uh, uh, like i'll just add a call around to the shaft right so in that way i will know okay those things are required and this process will continue until the optimum uh, solution is obtained <coughs> right after this the final step in which is involved in this process is step number seven in this case uh, in the step number seven we make a working drawing which shows all the dimensions tolerances and maybe like special uh, production requirements uh, let's say heat treatment if any generally the gears right the gears are heat treated they are surface heat treated and made surface hardening is done onto that right so why it is this done <coughs> it is just done to make the you know like the gear the gear surface more wear resistant right so those things are mentioned in this uh, on the drawing itself okay and it must have enough views and cross section for clarity uh, along with dimensional tolerances so in this way uh, like in this way it will help us to you know like to fabricate the whole uh, resources uh, externally itself right so those things are present okay uh, i'll just rub it off just a second okay cool okay so <clears throat> i guess like uh, it's already done so uh, this is like just the overall scenario what steps are involved first we did was uh, we specify the function of the element right after that we made the forces available on that particular element 
after that we select the material based on this four criteria and after that we define the failure criteria which is available after that the uh, step number five which is the shape of machine and uh, machine element and the geometrical dimensions are given as per the formulations available okay and finally we did some design modifications <coughs> onto the dimensions and uh, last step involves the making the final step okay the final uh, drawing of the material right so this suffices this completes the whole uh, design of a machine element process right i know like it's a bit more complicated might sound compl complicated to you but once <coughs> you will start like doing it in practical scenario right and that time it will become very much easy okay now i'll just add uh, all the uh, slides so you you can have a hold okay okay great so i guess like uh, this completes the whole process if you guys want uh, you can just take a screenshot of this i'll also add uh, <coughs> you know like the uh, pdf or the photo of this particular notes uh, in the description itself okay and you guys can access it right um okay thank you guys thank you for watching the video and uh, like please like share comment and subscribe to our youtube channel okay uh, thank you for your time and also comment and in, into the comment section if you have any doubts or difficulties or if you want uh, this uh, videos on a particular topic right um, do that uh, i will be more than happy to help you out okay thank you for your time thank you guys good day bye bye